inconsistent or there's any variance or deviations because let's say this report was more complicated and there's some minor difference or something like that i'm going to do the negative sum this is my plug formula and plug any difference there there is no difference here debits and credits match which should be the case if we put these reports in correctly so there so our 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 journal entry at least is in balance right so let's let's post this out and see if we can make sense of this process all right so now we've got the sales the shopify sales that's going to be posted to our trial balance which is basically our balance sheet on top of our income statement i'm going to put my cursor in t 10 and just say equals that 1624.89 and so there's that remember that's a revenue by the way you can see it's green down here even though it's a, a negative number because we're talking debits and credits here <laughs> and then let's do this one at a time i'll make this that's done i'll make it green just so we can see what what we're doing i sometimes do this with long journal entries so we're going to say okay shopify discount that's going to be like a contra revenue account so it's on the income statement side it's going to affect net income and it basically brings the the net sales down so that's a debit decreasing the net income and then the shopify returns we didn't have any but i'm going to put it here so that's green boom i'll greenify these two greenify and then we got shopify uh sh sh shopify shipping income this is what we charged for the shipping so we charge them that's going to bring up our income again because we have the income going up and then when we pay for the shipping we'll have to deal with the expense of the shipping right so this is still an income because we charged for the for the shipping of the clients increasing net income and then we've got the sales tax payable so this although we collected it from the client to pay for the sales tax which in theory is on them we're going to put it up here in a in our liability account uh seals tax we need to tax those seals okay so we're going to put that here that's still wrong that's still wrong crying out loud okay uh so we're gonna we're gonna put that here so this is going to be equal to the 1545 doesn't affect the net income and we're gonna have to pay that out when we pay it out we'll just decrease the checking account and we'll pay that sales tax out so that allows us to kind of track the sales tax a little bit better notice that we we can't really track the sales tax as nicely as we would like to within the quickbooks system because we, we're not using the sales receipts in invoice forms so we have to come up with a way to deal with the sales tax okay so then then we've got the shopify clearing account so this is the amount that's gonna go into the checking account but we're how, how about what about the fees oh no the, yeah the shopify clearing account this is the amount that's gonna go into the checking account but we're first gonna put it into the clearing and this is the paypal clearing the amount that the that people paid with the third party paypal rather than with the shopify pay and then we have the fees so these are fees on the shopify payments now remember that that people use the shopify pay to buy stuff so we're going to go to the fees and where where did i put the fees okay here they are and notice you could put the fees into cost of goods sold or uh or you might put them put them down here i'm gonna rename this this is why it messed me up it's, i'm calling it fees and charges let's do that okay and then uh but or you could put it into some people there's debate on whether that should be in cost of goods sold or an expense but you know it's an expense you know a cost to get sold is a type of expense so it's going to be a decrease to the net income bottom line and then you got the shopify uh, payment clearing this is the amount that's ultimately going to go into our checking account not our paypal account from shopify for those sales that happened through the shopify payment processor and then if we had any differences we would just dump the difference uh into our our sales shopify sales there are none because we did it perfectly so so there we have it so there's the idea and then what's going to happen at this point in time you've got these two clearing accounts 
those are you might say well, those are ugly like why do i have clearing accounts what does that what does that even mean that should be money the money is going to go into our checking account and our paypal checking account uh but we didn't want to put these directly into those accounts because in case there's an a discrepancy which there almost certainly would be with the paypal one because paypal is probably going to charge us a fee so we're going to put them into the clearing account first and then use the bank feeds that are going to come through on on quickbooks so now if we're in quickbooks we're going to be in our bank feeds which we're going to have integrated so if i go into my banking up top and we would see these amounts come through on the bank side and as they did we're not going to assign the other side to income like we did in the prior example but rather we're just going to reduce the clearing account because we already assigned it to income this by the way is similar to the concept of using the undeposited funds or the funds to be deposited account uh if you've if you've dealt with quickbooks on that in other words if i look at my flow chart sometimes when we have the invoices and the sales receipt let's say we have the sales receipt we make sales uh, and we need to group those sales in a grouping that is the same grouping that goes into the bank account. So if I had 10 sales for cash, I'm going to deposit them into the bank as one lump sum. So I don't want to put them into my checking account as 10 separate payments because I won't be able to match that to the checking account. Therefore, we put this into a clearing account, which QuickBooks used to call undeposited funds. And now it's called like payments to deposit or something. And then when we make the deposit, we take it out of that undeposited funds, that clearing account serving its purpose of helping us to group the deposits into the checking account in such a way that they'll tie out to what's going to be on the bank statement. So a clearing account different than a temporary account, temporary accounts being income statement accounts that roll into the equity section, the clearing accounts usually will go back to zero on a much shorter time frame than a, than like the temporary accounts which close out to equity so so in other words what we expect to happen is once we see this information clear the bank i expect then to have say uh the the paypal let's go to the paypal uh checking and and say that we're actually going to see this amount come into paypal now and let's say it was for that uh one two nine nine fifty five now it's likely that there would be a fee so let let's say it was more like let's say the amount that came in was like one two nine uh four or something that came into the to the paypal checking account so then we would have fees that we would have to possibly deal with at that point in time 